Hello everyone, welcome back to the Auburn Show. My name is Jordan, I'll be your host today. Um, I just wanna say hello to everyone. How have you guys been doing? Have you guys been working on any fun projects? Let me know, drop a comment in the comment section. Where are you watching, YouTube, Facebook? Are you watching after we go live? Because you can watch these shows after it ends. You can watch them forever and ever until the sun goes down, whenever you want. Uh, once we're done going live, you can replay these until the end of time. Um, so let us know where you're watching from. I'm, I'm excited to meet some of you guys again. All right, let's see. We have Karen. Hello, Karen. How are you today? We have P. Wissink. I hope I pronounced that right. Hello, I own the software, but I'm not. Oh, you haven't used it yet, but you own it. So this will be very, very educational for you. Exciting. Wisconsin, hello, Ohio. Okay, Ohio people. I know y'all have like three football teams, but the Super Bowl is coming up. And you know, here in Louisiana, we're rooting for Joe Burrow. So I just gotta say, go Bengals. It's a little controversial, but we love Joe Burrow. <laughs> uh, hello from Texas, Snowy Minnesota. Hello, Donna. Hello from Bucks County, PA. Wow. Oh, and I love your little, oh, that's a cute little cat. That's adorable. Um, we have Candy from Oregon. Hello, hello. Hello, Deborah. We have Terry. I use this software every time I embroider. Love that it's user-friendly. That's awesome. Lots of positive stuff about Embrilliance here. Have some of the software. Cool, cool. Hi from Illinois. Hello from Rockport, Texas. Very fun. All right, you guys, but don't forget, at the end of the show, we are going to pick a winner for our $50 All Brands e-gift card. All you have to do is leave a comment, hashtag All Brands. That is it. Just hashtag All Brands, the way that it's showing at the bottom of the screen. That's it. I know for my generation, we say hashtag. If you're a little bit older, it's like the pound sign. So you can say pound sign All Brands, hashtag All Brands, whatever you feel. Just make sure it's that, that little hashtag. So don't forget, we got that giveaway coming up at the end of the show. But enough for me. Let's go ahead and introduce our lovely guest. We've got Debbie Cleek, um, our Embrilliance Embroidery Software Expert. And make sure you tune in again next week because she'll be back for part two of the show, showing a little bit more Embrilliance software. Um, but today we're going to focus mainly on Embrilliance Essentials. So let me go ahead and bring her in. Hello, Debbie. Hello, how is everyone doing? We're good over here. How are you? I am so good. If I were any better, I wouldn't be able to stand it. <laughs> well, all right. Well, that's enough for me. I mean, you've got all the knowledge here, so I'm just going to let you take it away. Well, great. And, and by the way, football talk, I'm from <laughs> St. Louis. So I am not a Rams fan. No Rams fans here. We're pulling for the Bengals and the Bengals only. That's right. <laughs> Go Bengals. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll put you in full screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So can everybody see my screen okay? Everybody see my cursor? I changed it last night at the last minute. I thought, oh my God, my cursor's white, my screen's white, nobody's gonna be able to see anything. And I instantly went into panic and had to Google how to change my cursor in Windows 11. You know how that is at like 1230 at night, right? Isn't that when most people do their embroidery and come into problems, right? Well, hopefully today with what I'm going to show you, I'll be able to help you alleviate some of those problems, help you become a little bit more knowledgeable with the software and a little bit more confident. Um, first thing I want to show you or talk to you about, and it's at the end of this right here, this very top bar is the menu bar. That's because each one of these little words has a little menu under, it's called the fly out menu. For those of you that, you know, just kind of curious as to what they're called. They're called fly out menus and this is your menu bar. But I always get a lot of questions about manual and help file. Well, right here under help, the very first thing is your help file. And what I like about that, and the reason why I'm going over that first is because we're going to talk about the platform overview. 
which is this right here. We're going to talk about all the parts of the screen first. But then I can minimize this. And it's always right down here, minimize in my toolbar. So I can get to it quickly and easily and type in in the search bar what I'm looking for. OK, so I like to kind of get that out of the way first. So the parts of the screen, let's go over those real quick. We talked about this. This is the menu bar. This is your toolbar. This is your tool pane. And what's different from your tool pane and your toolbar is if you have stitch artists or if you have enthusiasts, which we'll talk about next week, um, when you touch certain tools on your toolbar, it changes the tool pane to accommodate and allow you to make the most out of that selected tool. OK, so this, of course, is your design page. This is your object tree. This is where we always um, recommend you select objects from your design page from your object tree. These guys up here, these select all. This reverses that selection, so it deselects all. This will lock your selected objects. This will lock and hide them. There will be some times when you might want to lock those objects so they don't get moved, but you don't want to see them because you're focusing on something else. So it's good to have a lock and hide. And then, of course, you always have to have an unlock. Down here is where your properties are. And when we get into more of the tools, this area here that is currently blank will become infinitely more important. OK, so let's get started with talking about what's on the toolbar. The very first one is your new page. So you can have as many new pages as you want across here. Just click on that. And you see I've got nine pages, which is fine. I'll probably use all nine of those by the time I show you everything I have to to show you and I, I like to keep a nice clean page so I don't confuse things. This guy right here, this is to open. So I have a folder here where it says look in of demo designs and these are some of my demo designs that I have. I click on that and bring that onto my design page. Now, I would never be able to sew this on this particular design page, which is why it's a very good thing in Brilliance Essentials has sizing that recalculates the stitches. So if I wanted to sew this on this 4x4 four four hoop that I have selected, I would just select the design, take one of the corners. If I want to size it symmetrically, which I do, I'll take one of the corners and just click and drag. Now, if I hold down my shift key, you notice that it's sizing symmetrically. It's sizing from both sides. Let's undo that and show you that again. I'm going to select my design. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to select because I want I need to size both ends Did both ends stick out of my hoop I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to size it and you see it's going to size from both sides at the same time giving me a perfect size for my motorcycle design for my husband or for me maybe I'm a biker chick who knows Okay, the next icon in our toolbar is the save. Then we have print. Then we have copy, paste. My favorite, undo and redo. 3D preview. There it is without 3D. There it is with 3D. I almost always keep on 3D. I can't remember a time when I was working on a design that I did not have 3D turned on. This is your zoom icon, your magnifier tool. So if I wanted to get right in those handlebars. Just click and drag that area and I'm zoomed right in there perfectly. Now, if I wanted to select a different area, 
Let's zoom out a little bit here. And, and you guys, yeah. if you have any questions, don't be afraid to drop them in the chat. Seriously. Debbie is extremely knowledgeable, you guys. Take advantage of this. Yes, ask any question you have. There's no question that's not a good question. You're so right. Oh, look, here we go. We got, by changing the size, does it change the stitches too? Okay, I was waiting for someone to ask that question. Let's back this up. Let's undo it a little bit. Right down here at the very bottom of our screen is what's called the system tray. And what you have down here is your hoop size, you have your design size, and you have your number of stitches. So let's select our, our motorcycle. Let's hold our shift key down again. Let's size this and keep an eye on our, our stitch count. It went from 93, 90, 93, 97, or 97, 97, down to 84, 51. So it does recalculate the stitches. And in Brilliance Essentials allows you to size up 250% and size down 50%. So you can cut that in half or double it by one and a half times. All right, that's cool. We have another question from Katie who says, why would you want to have 3D chosen? What does it do? 3D allows you to see there. your stitches. See, I can see it looks like it looks like real embroidery on my screen. When I turn 3D off, it just looks like a bunch of little wire lines. Oh, that's neat. And it looks cool. And if I were going to do some stitch editing things, I might want it off. But for aesthetic purposes, I like it on. I like to be able to see what my embroidery is going to look like. That's awesome. Okay. The next tool we have is our magnifier tool that allows you, like I said, to zoom in on certain parts. You also over here, which I really, really love, you have your heads up display, and that allows you to zoom in to all your selected or zoom to your hoop. So let's go back to this little this little piece we had selected here and let's zoom in. Whoops. There we go. Touch selected and there's that part of the seat and maybe Maybe the reason why I wanted to zoom that in, maybe I want to change that color to change your colors of your design. And, and I don't want you to think that I'm jumping around the tool pane. I'm kind of going through this in a logical work sense. You've brought your design in, you've sized your design, you're getting ready to sew it, you want to change the colors. So I'm kind of going along that way. Don't worry, we will cover every tool on the toolbar and the tool pane, and we will probably spend quite a bit of time on lettering and fonts, text. So here is my seat. I'm gonna click on the little color chip there, and it's gonna open up my color box, and I wanna make it red. Now let's zoom back, nope. Let's go up here. Let's go to hoop and zoom to my hoop. Now what I could do is select the rest of my green. Type in red. Type or click go. There's my red. How cool is that? That was very surprisingly easy, I feel. Literally, you just click like two buttons and boom, you already changed, changed the, all the, colors. the color. That's awesome. And that's the difference between a well digitized design. They put all of that color together in one color change. So that allowed me to be able to select that one color then select the, the color chip, 
change just that one color and change all of it out at one time. So now instead of having a black, white, and mint green bike, I have a black, white, and red bike, which is way more <laughs> tough looking more. than the <laughs> green bike. More Harley Davidson, less little tykes. <laughs> right, right. Okay, this guy here, this next tool, we've talked about the magnifying tool. You click on that and click and drag on an area to zoom in on it. You also have this over here. We talked about that. You have your zoom to all, zoom to selected, and zoom to who? There we go. To help, I click on the H. So we've talked about our zoom tools. Um, well, we got a good question from Katie. She says, are you using the Brilliance out of the box free version or do you have add-ons that enable you to do this? That's a great this question. was the out of the box version. So I don't have anything that you wouldn't have if you went and downloaded in Brilliance today, you would have the same identical thing that I have. Very cool. And let me show you how you find out what version you have. Let's go to help. Let's go to about, and I have version 1.173 built on November 4th, 2022. So I have the most current version. Click OK, and that box goes away. So that's kind of like the addendum to your question, Katie. <laughs> the next tool in our toolbar is the measure tool. It allows you, say I want to put this over a pocket, but I'm not sure if it's the right size. So I've measured my pocket. Now the next thing I can click on here and you see it kind of gives me a buffer around part of it. It just, it's, for me, it's hard to see if this is a true accurate measurement. I want to, and I want to measure um, maybe, from the, maybe from the middle to the front. So let's gather my ruler let's put it here on the center line and move to the front and down at the bottom of your system tray right here in the bottom left hand corner will give you the size of that design the halfway size You just never know when you might have a small, say I, I have a very small area and I need to size the design to fit that area. And this is just, a, just an extra added tool to help you be able to make sure that what you're doing is exact and precise as we like to do things. Right? Okay, the next tool. I love this tool, the Stitch Simulator. Now that I've got all my colors changed, if I wanted to scroll through and see how that's going to stitch out, say I've never bought any, I've never used anything from this designer before, so I don't know what kind of undersewing they use or if they even use undersewing in their designs, what kind of layering they do, if they have enough um, compensation in certain areas things like that. I just want to see how it's going to sew out before I waste a piece of fabric or heaven forbid your husband's favorite shirt. Of course, we all know our husband's favorite shirt is probably the one that's 150 years old and has a ton of holes in it, but still it's his favorite. I know we'd all like to get our hands on it and turn it into a, dish, a dust cloth, but for the sake of a happy marriage, we let him keep his favorite shirt, right, ladies and gentlemen? So I can grab this little bar and scroll through and sew through this entire design just like it would if it were at my machine. So this is how your machine would embroider everything out step by step? Exactly. Wow. Okay, this is awesome. 
Exactly. Yeah. Oh, Shannon <laughs> said, has, "Has she been in my husband's closet?" LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. This is but very there, cool. And, and I look, I can see here, there is under sewing here. It's a small design, so it's probably sufficient under sewing. It's a small area. But just, you know, a couple of those things you might want to look for and check for when you're, you know, checking a design from a, a designer you bought, purchased from for the first time. Or even, you know, you've bought several designs, but I've never bought one at this size. I want to make sure since I'm buying something very large, that they've modified the under sewing and things, not like the small ones that I usually buy. It's just a good handy tool to have. And I, I like to use it, especially when I'm changing colors of things. Sometimes I've had it where I've changed colors and I've gotten things out of order where I've had something stitch on top of something else that really wasn't supposed to happen. This is just an extra cushion to help prevent that from happening. Very cool. Okay. I don't know if you saw on the screen, Lloyd has a question. How do you change from millimeters to inches? Okay, very easily. Let's go up here to our edit. Go to, I'm sorry, go to view, file, edit, utility, view. Metric, click on metric, and now I'm on metric. If I click on my select object, I also have a metric and inches ob uh, object here that I can change from metric to inches. We all know hoops are in metric, so sometimes it's much easier to size your embroidery to metric as opposed to inches. And then it changes when I click it on metric, it changes everywhere. It changes my hoop now is 100 by 100, the size of my design, the um, amount of zoom where my cursor is at. That is very cool. Okay. Let's see. And Sherry says, can you add under sewing if needed? Not in essentials, but if you come back next week, we talk about enthusiasts. Enthusiast allows you to modify designs at the stitch level, and you may not be able to add under sewing in there, but you can modify the under sewing to make it a little bit more productive. There you go. Come back next week, you guys. She'll have more, more, more answers for you. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. The next one is our select objects. And that one you have to have, if I want to select my motorcycle, if I want to select my little strip of red seat, if I want to select all the other red, maybe I want to make that Silver. I kind of like that silver, but I would like the seat to be all red. <clears throat> so that is our select objects tool. The next tool in our toolbar is the preferences. There is a lot going on in here, folks, but don't stress out about it. Don't freak out. Don't think, oh, my God, I'm never going to understand this. There really are just a couple of things you need to concern yourself with. The first one, aptly, is the hoops, hoop selection. And you can choose from normal hoops. And there are multi-position hoops in Essentials. That means that, yes, I can split designs in Essentials, but you only have the basic hoops. So you have the 14 by 14, the 130 by 300, and then the 100 by 172 with three sections or two sections, depending on your design and how you like to stitch it out. Okay? But then when it comes to normal hoops, you have the whole enchilada. You have all of the 
normal hoops that are available for that particular format. And speaking of format, you have all of these formats you can select from. I saw with the baby lock, that's why I just keep it on PES, but I know that um, in Brilliance works with all major machine manufacturers. Okay, your next thing is your display settings. And this is where Lloyd is another one of those areas where you come down to inches or metric. Here is your metric setting, 10 millimeters per between uh, your guidelines. I like to keep my, I like to come over here to my inches. I like to set it to 0.25. That way it's set at a quarter of an inch. And then I like to come over here and click on my little arrow to the left. And that is 6.35 millimeters. Because how many millimeters are in an inch? Anybody? Anybody? Give or take 25. Okay. I'm not very good at the metric system here. <laughs> I'm not either. But, but, but being able to remember that, I set my inch spacing for 25 and then my metric, I have it give me the equal in metric and it's 6.35. So times that by four, that's right about an inch. Interesting. And let's see, we have a question from Vicki. She wants to know if a magnetic hoop can be added. Magnetic hoop may already be added. Let's go, let's go back and look. Okay. Oops. Let's go back to preferences. Let's go to hoops. Which magnetic hoop? Um, I don't know if she said which one, but. Because it can be added. There's in, plenty. And then next week we talk about an enthusiast. Enthusiast, you can create your own hoops. So if you had a hoop in here that was not to like a magnetic hoop, like the Magna hoop or one of those, it wanted to create it, you could certainly do that in enthusiast if it wasn't already built in. We try to keep our hoop list pretty current, but unfortunately, sometimes they come out with hoops faster than we can add them to the software. And it never fails. You touch one thing like the hoops and something else goes cattywampus. She says she's got the dime 210 by 400. I guess that's in millimeters. The biggest one I see here is the 272 by 408. And that's the bigger. XP1 or the Solaris. Oh. And it doesn't say if that's a magnetic hoop or not. I think not? I think it's not. I think it's a hoop that comes with the machine, but I could be wrong. <clears throat> okay, so we talked about our display settings. You can talk about your grid as, or you can talk about, you can show your grid as lines or dots. There it is, this dot. And to me, do it however you want, but to me, I find dots terribly confusing. I like, like I like my graph paper. I like the little dotted lines to show me where to line things up at. It's so hard, especially if I were going, if I were trying to line up text under or above this motorcycle, I would have such a hard time with the dots trying to line that up as opposed to the lines. But there again, that's just my brain. And just I just want to let you know that you you have options. There's always options. Debbie, can you show us one more time how to go from millimeters to inches and inches back to millimeters? We have a couple of people um, asking again. 
Okay, in your display settings or for the program? Um, I think where they can see um, down at the bottom where the hoop size is. Um, okay. The size of the right here. If I have my select button clicked on, picked up, I have millimeters and inches. I can change it here. Or I can go to my view menu and change it here. There's two places. So view in metric or just click between the millimeter and inch button. That seems pretty simple. Yeah, it is. It really is. All right. I think that's all the questions we have so far. If you want to just keep on okay. track. Okay. Moving on, moving on, <laughs> onward and upward. Your mouse wheel, you have the ability to adjust it to zoom, to scroll your window, or to zoom and pan. I just have mine adjusted to zoom, which means if I click on this motorcycle, it's going to zoom it in and out. Now I can change that to scroll the window. I don't like it to scroll the window because it only scrolls it up and down and sometimes I like to scroll left and right. So I keep mine set to zoom. Check for updates. If you put a little check mark here, allow the program to automatically check for updates when your program is run. That means that the first time you turn your, your computer on that day and have internet connection, it will automatically check and see if there is a newer version of the program than the one you have installed. So that's kind of a nifty little checkbox to have there. It doesn't hurt anything to have it checked, that's for sure. Ghost mode. That allows you to lighten what you have on your screen. Say you have multiple objects on your screen. That will allow you to lighten some of them so they're not so intense on the screen. So if, I, again, I'm working on one thing and I don't want to be distracted by this motorcycle, I'm working on the hot stud that's on the motorcycle, I can ghost it, which means I can reduce the intensity of that so I can focus on what I need to focus on for my digitizing or for my editing. Maybe his eyes are green and I want his eyes blue. Okay. Auto recover. How many of you know that we have an auto recovery in our software? <clears throat> so if you're in an area or working during a storm and you have a catastrophic shutdown, you think, oh my God, I spent hours working on that, whatever that design was, and you think you've lost it all. If you have yours set to automatically save all your documents every 10 minutes, you will at least have what you had, what you were working on 10 minutes before the power went off. And Lord knows we need that auto save here in Louisiana. <laughs> yeah. Hurricane season comes around and we, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay, jumps and overlaps. This can be a little bit tricky. So let's see if I can explain it to you simply. So we can under and if there's questions here, don't hesitate to ask because like I said, this section can be a little tricky. First of all, you have remove overlaps when saving stitch files. That means if I take this mortise, so let's, let's cancel this. Let's close it.
Okay, now I have two motorcycles here. I know it's not the most attractive design, but for, for demo's sake, we've got two motorcycles here. And I'm going to go back to my jumps and overlaps. Remove overlaps when saving stitch files. That means when I go file, save as, it is going to automatically remove the underlying stitches of the design on the bottom. Okay? So whenever you talk about, and whenever you hear anybody talking about RHS, or remove hidden stitches. This is what they're talking about. You can also, and we'll get to that in just a bit, but you can also go down here to the scissors. That will remove your hidden stitches temporarily while you're working on your design to see if that's really where you want to remove those stitches or not. Make sure you've got everything just the way you want it before you save your design and remove those hidden stitches. Okay, treat objects labeled as applique position as filled. If you're working with an applique design and you're laying layering applique on top of applique, you're going to want that checkbox too because that will remove the applique stitches from underneath the top applique. That means you won't have that speed bump in your applique. You have nice smooth fabric on top. Does that make sense? Okay. Then you want to ensure ties surrounding jumps and when you're doing lettering, this can, this pertains to that. Run when jumps are small. So if you have you, if you have lettering and your lettering is really close together and it's really too small to trim anyway, run to choose run when jumps are small. That buries those stitches more, so they're not as noticeable. So you don't have to trim them. Okay, and then you can set parameters for that if you'd like. As you can tell, this is how I keep my settings. I, I don't ensure ties surrounding jumps because the software and the digitizer has done that and I've not done anything to the design. I've not, I've not done anything like we might do in enthusiasts where I would need to ensure my ties surrounding my jumps are there. We'll talk about that one next week, ladies and gentlemen. See, Lloyd, you thought I forgot about you. She never forgets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next thing is conversion. And we have, just like with the hoops, you can convert to all these different formats. Each one of these formats has certain parameters that are either preset or can be set for that specific format. Now with the PES, let's look at it. Someone was asking this question just earlier. They wish we had a used version six because apparently the older machines don't read the version 10 PES version. I don't, I don't know. I don't have a machine that new, so I wouldn't be able, I couldn't test that for her. I felt bad. My machines are all dinosaurs. <laughs> so you have used version five and later for real thread colors. And that was when version five palette came around and it allowed you to be able to view in the machine, the real thread color names. So you might want to put a check mark, check mark there. If you're using an older 4x4 machine that you basically just need the color stop in your PES file, you might, and it's using your basic thread palette, you might want to use your Force version 1. 
And then machine specific allow 130 by one by 180 by 300 hoop. That's a PES version six hoop. And right for the six needle when required. So back in the early six needle machines, there was also something that needed to be done specifically for those machines. Now your newer ones, you won't need to do that as much as you would for your older ones. I happen to have an older one. And if I were writing a design for my six needle machine, I would probably have to place a check mark there. So we have a question from Nilda on YouTube. She says it has thousands of stitches. Will it take a long time? Oh, this design only has 16,901 stitches. Only. It won't, <laughs> it won't take that long, probably 45 minutes. To stitch out completely. That's not I bad. Would, I would guess. Oh, we got tons of questions coming and we have walk by faith. What is the difference in saving a work file versus stitching files? Okay, if you're editing a file and you're not done editing it yet, I am changing the colors of this and I'm going to do some, well, let's close this. I am changing some colors. I'm using my stitch simulator to add some color stops. Let's get this one out of the way. And I'm not done working on it yet, but I want to come back and work on it. And I want it to be just like it is. I don't want all my work to go away. So I would go to file, save as, and I would save my stitch and my working file. My working file being the one that I'm going to come back, bring back in and work on some more. It becomes more critical when you're adding lettering and when you're doing digitizing. That's when your stitch and working file become more critical. And they save as two separate documents, right? They or do. you, you would I would have a motorcycle.be file and a motorcycle.pes file. I would have two separate files. Okay. Oh, and look, Jennifer says, how do I know which version PES file to use? Unless you have an older machine, you're going to use just the regular PES. And we try to make our PES version one that works across all the PES formats. That PES version 10 is something we're going to be doing some testing on and seeing if we can't smooth that out somehow and make it a little more user friendly. Okay, cool. Oh, and Nilda says, are you digitizing now? No, now I'm just editing. If I were digitizing, I would have brought in a piece of artwork. And then I would have applied stitches to the artwork. I would have had to draw an outline for my tank and fill it in with whatever stitches that I wanted and draw an outline for my seat and make it all red like I would like. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Oh, and Lisa says, before we finish, would you show again how to select and change hoop size? I sure will. Let's do that right now. Here are our hoops right now. I have the 100 by 100. But of course, I had the size for that hoop. If I did not want to size for that hoop, I could have used the 130 by 180. So I would simply click on that hoop, click apply, click OK. And now I can have... A bigger, yeah, cool. That was easy. There. And if I want to change to a multi-position hoop, that's this little option right here, multi-position, same way. Click on the multi-position, the 130 by 300, click apply. And that's going to give me the breakdown for that. So it's going to split right around here. Okay. 
Very cool. Oh, and Mary wants to know how do you group? And Karen wants to know to digitize, don't you need stitch artist? Yes, you do. You need stitch artists if you're going to digitize. That's why I'm showing you essentials, and that's why we're not digitizing. <laughs> you guys are jumping the gun here. Come on. Come back next week. <laughs> and the other question was? How do you group from okay. Mary? So I would select these. Well, and it comes more in handy. And then I'm going to lock selected items. So that means that these objects here are all locked together. So I can't change their color. I can't move them. I can't um, delete the stitches. I can't do anything with that because they're locked. Now, if I wanted to group, I believe edit over here is your group and ungroup. So let's unlock this. And it's kind of the same over here. If I go to my edit menu and come down here and group. And that's mainly if I have a bunch of different unique objects on my design page. Because once you have, let's see, what's the easiest way to explain this without being confused? Let's get a new design page. Let's go to. Merge design. Oops. This is just telling me I have Merrily and I don't have the serial number in here. Okay, so now I have these two guys here. They're both independent objects, but if I want to group them together because I'm going to bring in something else and I don't want these guys, I got these right where I want them, and I'm going to bring in something else. I'm going to select all from over here, come over to my edit, group. Now, see, you notice I selected both of them when I clicked on it, even when I click over here. See how it selected both objects? That's because they're grouped. Now, if I want to just select one object, I can select it over here, and that will allow me just to select one outfit, one object because I don't have them locked. If I had them locked, I wouldn't even be able to select the one. Oh, well, yeah, I can. But I can't move it. See how that works? Let's undo that a couple times. There we go. Okay, this is where you bring in designs if you have merged designs, if you have any like the um, envelope shapes I have here, which I believe are free on the on the Embrilliance blog. So you can go and download those. This is where you would bring in any shapes that you would have that would come with. I think Embrilliance Enthusiast comes with some shapes. So that's where you'd bring those in. But we really need to talk about because we're getting close to, well, yeah, we're getting close to an hour. And not that I mind, but you guys might mind. We need to talk about creating letters. Okay, so this is my ABC to create letters. You'll click on your A and it will drop an ABC on your design page. And then I click on this down arrow and it will give me all the fonts that I have built in and both installed via BX file on my computer. So and Brilliance comes with fonts already, right? And Brilliance comes with 12 fonts. Nice. And they are pretty, they're pretty cool fonts. 
Okay, you can choose the style. An oval. You can also choose to curve that more or less. You can adjust your order. You can put certain, now this is, this is curved. This is not text on a circle. If I want to do text on a circle, I'm going to come up here and get my ABC. I am going to take off my oval. I'm going to come up here and go normal. And now I'm going to put it on a circle. There we go. <clears throat> See how I curved that a little bit there? Yeah. Now my radius slide bar allows me to curve it more or less. Cool. I also have the ability to place it on the bottom. I have a space slide bar so I can add a little space between those letters if I'm going to place it on the bottom. I have a word space slide bar and a line space. So if I'm doing a, a prayer or a poem or some kind of tribute thing, I can also increase or decrease my line spacing as well. I've done a number of those, and sometimes you only have so much space in your hoop, so you kind of have to be creative as to where you put your letters with descender so they don't go over letters with ascenders. So, like, you don't want to put a G over an H. Maybe you want to try to put your G over an E or an N. Just say... Oh, I yeah. have a question from Diana. She says, my largest hoop size is six by 10. Am I able to use multi-hoop for applique designs larger than this? That's a good question. You can, but applique with a multi-position hoop can be a little tricky. It can be done and it can be done very successfully and you'd be very, very happy and very satisfied with your end result. It requires a little practice. You have to think it, think it through because you're going to do your placement of one side and your placement of your second side. Then you're going to do your fabric of your first side and your fabric of your second side because you've got to cut that fabric and you're going to satin stitch around all of it. So it's a little bit different thought process, but it is possible. Well, there you go, Diana. <laughs> Hope you've got a little bit of patience. <laughs> it, it's just a lot of back and forth moving your hoop mainly. But once you tackle that and get to your end satin stitch, you're in like Flynn. Perfect. Oh, and Faith wants to know how to merge fonts you buy. Okay, if I bought a BX font, let's see if I have a BX font here somewhere. Let's minimize this. I do. doesn't remember where she keeps her fonts. <laughs> I know, I know, I have them. Okay, okay. I have the Merrily collection though, and that's a BX file. And BX file, doesn't matter if it's BX fonts or BX file, it's all the same. If I wanna add a BX file or BX fonts to my software, I simply click on the unzipped file, see how it's yellow and green with an arrow through it? 
click on that, drag, and drop it right into the software. And then and the box it? will come up. That's it. Oh my gosh. I go through our, a harder process way. trying to install software just on a computer. <laughs> <laughs> the little box will come up and say you've successfully installed blah, 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 blah font. And you can and drag and drop another, or you can double click on them. But I, I find dragging and dropping them. Very cool. Oh, and Katie wants to know, how do you change the color? Would it be the same way with the motorcycle? Oh, exactly. Let's go back here to our motorcycle. Well, let's let's get a new design page. <clears throat> let's go to file. Let's go to, we'll just go to merge working file. It's too dark. I don't want a black blow dryer. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on my blow dryer. Click on my color tab, click on my color chip, scroll through till I find the color that I want. There we go, change the color. So remember, click on your color chip. Now I should also tell you while we're talking about color, gosh, I could talk about this forever, seriously all day long because now that we're talking about color we need to talk uh, we need to have a full color conversation or i would be remiss so <laughs> um when we're changing our colors we can click on our prussian blue and it's brother embroidery i use a lot of robus and anton thread I use a lot of Robus and Anton Rand, so I'm going to click on that. I'm going to click my blue, click OK. Now I'm going to come over here to my preferred thread palette. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to click on my thread button, and I'm going to click on my Robus and Anton Rand. And it's going to have a little, a little box here that says, use this as my preferred thread brand. I'm going to tell it yes and okay so that means click on my preferred button and it's all automatically changed to my preferred thread palette that is super cool that is probably one of my favorite features. Oh, let's see. Mary wants to know, uh, so you are able to change each, like when you were doing the alphabet, you could change each letter of the alphabet to a different color if you wanted to, right? You certainly can. And what that will do is that will force a trim between each letter. A lot of people do that just to force a trim between each letter. And let me tell you a little secret about that. Let's leave our A. All you have to do is have two different colors. Which makes it a little bit quicker. And that will force a trim between each letter. And you won't have to change your thread. Of course, you'll keep your same spool of thread on there. But it will trim as if you were changing your thread. Cool. And Pauline wants to know, how do you change the order that something will stitch? Okay, let's see. Right now I have two objects in my object tree. Click on the text or click on the object and just click and drag it. Oh, come on. Okay, plan B, right click, tell it to move earlier. There you go. 
so that is the that is how it'll stitch out. It'll do the A B C D E F G first, and then right. the A B C second. Cool. I don't know why it's not clicking and dragging. It should click and drag, but it's shy because it knows it's on camera. <laughs> it could be. It could be. That's okay. A little stage, right. There's a couple of things on the tool pane that we need to talk about. Any questions about lettering? Um, I think we maybe covered them all. Okay. Okay, so let's go over the tool pane a little bit. This is, of course, where we change to a metric to inches. This right here gives you the size of the design that's selected. Right here, this next group of buttons. This gives you the percentage of that size. So it's 100%. I have not sized it. If I were to click and drag and size it, see now it's 125%. This button here, if I have it, well, the way it is now, if I have it selected, it will not scale proportionately. It will scale length or width, but not proportionately. I always always keep this selected because I don't know the when the last time was I wanted a motorcycle stretched out. Motorcycles just don't make good stretch limos. This is your rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise or left, and this is your rotate right. Mirror image. This is your flip vertically. This is your flip horizontally. The same thing as mirror imaging. Okay. This guy here centers the design in the hoop. This guy here fits it to the hoop. So what this does, fit to hoop, which is another one of my favorite tools. Love fit to hoop. We'll size the design, the maximum allowable size, which means up to 250% to fill the hoop. So this looks like it went by the size it was before, already sized. Yep. Fit to hoop, 250%, exactly. Okay, let's go back to these pesky motorcycles. Where did I leave them? Oh, let's use this. Let's copy and paste it. Let's select all. Let's come over here. This is our remove hidden stitches button. Remember I told you that there was a button that allows you to click on and see how it's removed those stitches. Now, as soon as I let my design go, it will regenerate those stitches and allow me to reposition. Maybe I want to do it this way. That, if you could see my face right now, you guys, she clicked that button and my jaw dropped. <laughs> I just think that is so cool. That is that. And remember, it works in conjunction with the preferences. Remember when we went to display, was it display settings? No, it was our jumps and overlaps, remove overlaps when saving stitch files. So now when I go to file, save as, it won't let me save because it's a demonstration version. 
but it would let me save this file and I would be able to sew through it and you would not see those stitches. Very cool. Oh, and Pauline says if you if you do maximize size, will it stitch out nicely? So when you hit that max size to stretch it out to the size of the hoop? It recalculates the stitches and it will only size, remember I told you early on, the maximum allowable size is 250%. So as long as we stay within those percentage parameters, we should be okay. Now with text, text can be a little funky sometimes. Text, we all know, text can be a four letter word and it can do its own thing no matter how hard we try to get it to do our thing but when it comes to designs like if i were to take this design here let's get this one out of the way that would stitch out fabulously at the 250 percent or at the the larger size Oh, and we've got Diana who wants to know if I upload a purchased font, will in Brilliance also adjust the stitches if I resize or does this only work with built-in fonts? If you are using a BX font, it will recalculate and do everything with your stitches and you'll be able to arc them and make them circle text and everything as if they were a built-in font. So basically what you're saying is Embrilliance does literally all of the hard work for you. <laughs> right. You just it's, do beep, beep, boop, couple buttons and press, press go. <laughs> pretty much. It does all the heavy lifting. It's, there's a reason why it's called it's Essentials. Essentials. It you're essentials 100% correct. Of embroidery. It has your sizing. It has your color change. It has your... Um, fit to who it has your um real quick and easy metric to inches it has all of those things your preferred thread palette um the ability to add text all those specialty text tools the quick styles the be able to put in a monogram and all those things quick and easy it also has the project advisor, which will give you needle recommendation, thread recommendation, and tear away for whatever of these selected um, fabric choices you have chosen here. Like if I select linen, it's going to tell me to use a little bit smaller needle in my canvas. And it's going to tell me to use a little bit finer thread as well. It's going to tell me to use a 40 weight. And it's going to tell me that uh, probably with linen, I'm going to want to use a tearaway because I'm not going to want that big old bulky fabric on the back of my linen table runner or dresser scarf. Or my flowy spring skirt that I'm going to make for Easter. You honestly, you all you have to do is install this, and then you don't even have to think. You, it thinks, it thinks for you. It does. And when you when you install it, if you already have an Embrilliance product, all you have to do is go to to help, and help and serial numbers would be here and you'd put your serial number in and it would add it would unlock the features of essential say you started off with enthusiasts it's going to unlock the features of enthusiasts for you so are you uh, got that backed up if you start off with enthusiasts it's going to unlock the features of essentials for you so you don't have once you install a platform once you don't have to install anything else ever again except the updates to keep it current. And once you enter your serial number, your serial number stays there. Always be sure to register your software. We get probably 10 requests a day for people who have misplaced their software serial numbers and are hoping that we have them for them. 
probably about 90% of the time we do, but there's a fair amount of time that they didn't register their software. So we can't, we, we can't make up a number, unfortunately. So rule number one, do not register forget your, your serial, your serial number. <laughs> register your software. All right. Well, I don't, think we wanna, I don't know if we want to, do you guys want to keep going? I feel like there's so much more to show. Let us know if you guys want to learn a little bit more. We can, we can, we can drag this out a little bit longer if you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> there's so much to learn. And Mary asked, will this work, will this about work for Thumbnailer? I think there's a little typo in there. Okay, thumbnailer. We'll probably talk about that a little bit next week. Well, yeah, maybe, but, but maybe not. Let's let's cover thumbnail. We've got a, a few minutes. Thumbnailer. See these little guys here on my desktop. You guys are getting a, a sneak preview of of part two next week. <laughs> these are. This is this is all. These are all thumbnailer. This is the thumbnailer icon. And all it does, the all the icon does, is it allows you to select the formats you want to view, and then click OK, and it allows you to see thumbnails of your designs on your desktop. So thumbnailer functions. That's why it's got its own i its own little icon here. It functions independently of the others, but if you create a file association, in other words, you marry that embroidery design with a platform, you can double click on one of these and have it open up. In your software, mine won't because it's just a demo version. And I don't think I've married my two. My two went through a bad split. It was horrible. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so any other questions about essentials? Let's see. Uh, we have a few more coming in. We have um, Sherry with, if I want to duplicate, a, duplicate small images several times to make a long border, can I have it remove the tie off stitches so it stitches as one? It's a good question. The only way, the only reason you're going to want it to remove the tie off stitches is if they're going to be overlapping. Because you're going to trim your top thread. Maybe not your bottom, but you're going to trim your top thread and you don't want it to unravel. But if I copy this and pasted it, I could make a border out of this. And now I can come up. We didn't talk about this guy. I can come up here and go to align and distribute. And I can align these mm -hmm. along the bottom. Select them all. Bottom. See how they move down all on the bottom line? That is a line. Distribute does the similar thing, only it's going to put them diagonally and distribute them evenly across the design page. Okay, so that is how, and I'm, unless you're going to overlap these, or unless I'm missing something with your question, I don't know why you would want to eliminate the tie-offs, because you're not going to want to go through all this. I, I'm not going to want to go through all this trouble making this dresser scarf or this station scarf for my hairdresser 
and have it start to come unraveled the first time she washes it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would run the risk of happening when I trim the top threads that takes this cord to this cord to this cord to this cord. All right, let's see. I'm that scrolling through. We've got more comments. Okay. I have a Janome 500E. How do I transfer my designs from Embrilliance to my GEF format? Does your machine use anything other than a GEF format? JEF? Is it a JEF perhaps? Yes, J, it says J-E-F. Okay, very easy. Here, you're, you're going to make my banner for my hairdresser, and I'm going to put it in the J-E-F format for you so you have it ready to go to stitch out on the towel that I gave you to stitch it on. So we're going to go to File. We're going to go to Save As Stitch and Working. And it's going to give you a box that's going to pop up. We are just going to go here. Here, give me a minute. I'm going to open up the. Okay. Let's bring in a design file. Okay, I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to save as stitch and working. See right here where it says save as type. I'm going to click on this little down arrow here and I'm going to select JEF from that list and I'm going to click save. Save it to the USB drive or however you need to, need to save it to get, get it to your machine, and you're good to go. Bob's your uncle. That easy. <laughs> yep. Now, if you have Direct Connect, then you so you know how to save it to that drive. Or if you have a USB stick that it uses, just save it to go to save in, click on your drop down, save it to your USB drive. Okay. All right, Debbie, I think we learned a whole bunch today. I think we learned a lot. I know I definitely learned a lot. Well, I hope um, it didn't overwhelm anybody. I, <laughs> I, I don't think so. We had and, tons and of and comments a little bit coming of time, in. So I try to touch on a little bit of everything. Yeah. We've and only got have, one hour, you know, and there's so much more to this to this software than, you know, you can even touch on in an hour. Yeah, but it's the power thank house, God, I think, you'll be back software. next week. <laughs> yep. Oh. All right, you guys. So like I said, part two is going to be next week. So if you want to come back and learn a little bit more, um, definitely come back. We'll be here next Thursday, same time with Debbie. Um, but I know we're heading into the end of the show and we still need to pick a winner for our $50 audience e-gift card. So hurry Yay! up one last time. Get those comments in. Use hashtag all brands to enter yourself into the into the giveaway. I'll give you a couple more minutes just so you can get all of your entries in. Um, and then I'll go ahead and I will pick a winner. So get those comments in, guys. Get them in. We know you want that free $50. I want that free $50. I know so Debbie wants that free $50. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and I will pick a winner. Ooh, exciting stuff. You guys ready for this? We're going to draw. Ooh, it's happening. It's happening. Sandy Ratter. Congratulations. Yay. 
Congratulations, Sandy. You are the $50 All Brands e-gift card winner. So if you could please email us at events at allbrands.com with your name, your address, and your phone number, we will get that gift card out to you as soon as we can. You need that All Brands money, girl. I want that All Brands money. <laughs> I need to buy in brilliance. <laughs> I need to buy an embroidery <laughs> Um, but yes, thank you so much, Debbie, for being on the show. We can't wait to see you next You're week. Welcome. I can't um, wait to be and... here next week. Huh? I can't wait to be here next week. She can't wait, you guys. So make sure you guys come back and see us. We will be here. Um, and that is it for us, Aaron Albrand, signing off. We hope you guys enjoyed the show and we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.